know there was this one guy a long time ago. Will Smith in the hit film I, Robot, and technology now jumping off the big screen into real life. Some innovative new robots are being unveiled in Montreal this morning at the 17th annual Canadian Conference on Intelligent Systems. And joining us now to show us their robots and what they can do are Richard Lapac of White Box Robotics with his PC bots, Paul Gilbert of Kwanzaa with his Stroke Rehab Robot, and Parvin Musavi of Queen's University with her biopsy guidance system for prostate cancer detection. Wow, th thank you all very much for joining us. Thank You're you. welcome, Good thank you. And, and, and we're going to ask each of you uh, individually to show us what your robots can, can do. Now, Richard, I want to begin with you. you these, uh, your PC bots, can you, can you show us what they're capable of doing? Absolutely. Uh, what I can show you is how these robots can navigate entirely by themselves. So I have my friend Daisy here, and Daisy is, for all intents and purposes, a computer. So it runs an operating system like you would expect a computer to. You can also plug in your keyboard, monitor, and mouse, mm -hmm. but without plugging those in, it has sensors on it, and if it sees an obstacle, what it'll do is it'll actually move around. See? So as I walk around the robot here, this robot detects that I'm there and moves around. We've put some pretty sounds on it so that uh, it can tell us that it's detected some things. But as it goes around as well, it makes sure that it wouldn't fall off some stairs or fall off a sunken living room, for example. But some of the applications for it is this thing is internet connected. So literally from anywhere in the world, I can see what this robot is seeing. I can hear what it's hearing. And I can even talk to some people as well. Richard, so, I, Richard, I have the funny, funniest feeling that you're a, a bit of a Star Wars fan, because that's an R2-D2 voice if I ever heard one. It certainly is. It certainly <laughs> is. That's something that people can uh, associate with, that's what? for sure. So what I'll ask is uh, Daisy to stop right now. And then, uh, Daisy, ha let me just turn around for you. And, what what, what uh, are the real-life applications for this? Well, we're seeing a lot of applications with elderly assistants as the population gets older. Uh, what we're seeing is applications so that people, family members, can take can take a look at their loved ones and make sure that um, they're well taken care of at home. Right. We're also seeing applications for uh, asset management so that you can track inventory in a warehouse, for example. Uh, we're also seeing applications where you can tie it into the environmental health control or the climate within a building, so to set temperatures, humidity levels. So for all intents and purposes, this robot is a, call it a mobile sensor platform. And mm. so what sensors do you want to put on it? For example, if your dishwasher was uh, leaking today, how would you know? But if you had a PC bot in your house, what could happen is the PC bot could navigate your house, detect the leak, and then call you on your cell phone or and send you, you a know. page. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to go over to, I just I'm go over to Paul Gilbert okay. now, Kwanzaa. Oh, Daisy had a quick oh. message for you. So oh, okay. Just... Love Canada again. Go, Sims, go. Go, Sims, go. Go, so Sims, just... go. Go, yeah, Sims, go. Being, being an Ottawa boy. <laughs> being an Ottawa boy, you had to put in the last bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. I want to go over to Paul now. And Paul, I want to uh, tell me about the stroke rehabilitation device. Well, what's really exciting and innovative about the product that we have here is, is we're getting people to do post-stroke rehabilitation by playing a video game. And what you, what you can see here is what, what happens normally is you have a therapist working one-on-one -on -one with a patient, uh, in this case pushing a stool backwards and forwards, and what you can see in, uh, on the, the screen here is that we've uh, digitally recreated a stool. But what you can't see is that as uh, my patient here pushes the, uh, the, the lever forward and back and from side to side, they can actually feel the stool fall from side to side. So, so, so this th is there's one. a sense there's a, that feeling, it, it comes through, through your hand, is that it? That's right. What, wow. you, what we have is we have motors connected here. So as he moves from side to side, you actually feel it. It feels like the, 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 the stool is falling over uh, one way or the other. Now, we're working with the Toronto Rehab Institute uh, in Toronto, of course, and the University of Toronto Computer Science Group to develop this to work alongside uh, real patients and work with real therapists to uh, make sure that the therapy is actually valid. And, 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 the then, robot, and the robot adjusts the difficulty and the exercises for each individual patient as they progress. That's right. So, so as, as the patient gets better in the early days, it's actually giving guidance. But as they get stronger and, and, and the, uh, the, the, their arms and their, 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 the brain is working in sync, it actually gives more resistance, so then it starts exercising the arm more, more in, in, in a higher, higher level. That's fascinating, Paul. Um, and what's, what's really exciting about yeah. this is that we can have, you can now start having games which are gender and age-specific. So you might want to have like a motorbike kind of game for, for a young guy that's had a head injury, 
Well, for my mother, she loves gardening, so that might be quite an interesting game for her to play. <laughs> right, virtual garden. Uh, virtual Parvin, garden. Uh, uh, tell me now, your, your, your biopsy guidance system, uh, I mean, prostate cancer is the second leading cause of uh, cancer-related death um, for, for Canadian men, but I understand that, you know, with blood tests, like, everything has to be so exact, and even needle biopsies can miss it, so can you demonstrate how this works? Uh, yes, absolutely. So we are at Queen's finding ways to fundamentally improve the role of ultrasound for detection of prostate cancer. So with my um, colleague Dr. Abel Masumi and our graduate student, we have developed this system. And what I have here is I have a replica of the prostate and I have an ultrasound probe. And we take a few seconds of images of the prostate, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here. Right. And uh, we have found that small variations in these images are highly correlated with the existence of cancer with up to 90% accuracy. This is very exciting because, as you mentioned, the screening methods aren't um, exact. And you can think of our system as providing night vision, someone looking for someone else in a dark area. So by that I mean we provide a color map that highlights the highly probable areas of cancer in red, as you see on the screen here. And could this remove the need for inv evasive, uh, or invasive needle biopsies? Yes, absolutely. So wow. we foresee that in, in uh, the long term, one of the applications of this system would be to uh, remove the need for biopsy altogether and also be applied to other kinds of cancer uh, rather than prostate cancer. Parvin, that's fascinating. Thank you all, uh, lady and gentlemen, for this. We really appreciate it. A brilliant, brilliant view into the future. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.